I'm going to get into this and uh, talk about rejected sketches. So the, primarily I work as a book cover illustrator. So I uh, do some concept design, but the majority of my work is sci-fi fantasy illustration for publishing, uh, trading cards, book covers, things like that. Um, and when you're doing illustration work for various clients, sometimes they you you have to always give them options regardless of what it what it ever it is you're whatever it is you're working on you have to give them your, your client options for a job whether it's in-house or whether you're a freelance working from home wherever you are in the world um your client likes to to be able to choose sketch a b c d um or say to you we like sketch A, but can you combine elements of sketch C with sketch A and give us a new version of that design? <clears throat> so uh, let me call up some images here so that I can give you an example of what I'm talking about. So I did sketch one, two, and three uh, for a project. And let me know if everybody can see what I'm talking about here. There's a little lag, I guess. Why is it doing that? Well, that's weird. Okay, so I'm going to have to choose each individual thing. I can't just show my entire screen. That's all right. That's the next thing we have to figure out. Um, all right. <clears throat> so I played around with different sketches for uh, a book cover a few years ago where uh, the story involved a, a character, a sci-fi character, and an infant and like aliens and space battles and all kinds of stuff and i thought this is really cool it'll give me an opportunity to um paint a baby on a on a sci-fi cover and i might be able to even use my own child as reference uh for the for the piece so i was thinking about when i whenever i do a an illustration uh commission i'm taking detailed notes about the story, the environment, uh, the characters, the costuming elements, um, just the overall mood of the piece. And uh, from there, I, I work up a, a number of different sketches for that, for that job. And so, so this is another one of another option from that where I'm playing with the, the environment a little bit more, the, the outer space, you know, the nebula feel, uh, trying to do anything I can with the environment so that it doesn't look um, terrestrial, doesn't look like it's Earth. Uh, but, you know, playing with, I'm playing with, uh, this with it so I'm playing with ships like any kind of narrative element that I can add into the piece that frames the action uh, that I'm going for so in in this one I'm going for the staging the environment playing with the lighting on the of the character, the design of the character's costume, um, ripped shirt, ripped sleeve, just to kind of age the character or show that he's uh, war torn or, or, you know, been been through something. Um, subtle hint of weapons in his in his hand here, with a staff in this hand, a walking stick. Um, anything he has to defend or protect 
this small infant. Um, and then, so the first one is this, it's basically like taking that previous sketch and just rotating the camera around and changing the camera angle slightly so that it's eye level instead of a lower, low angle, low Dutch angle shot. Um, and the third sketch was more of a movie montage kind of uh, option for the project. And I think I have the updated version of that sketch here. There you go. So <clears throat> the client liked the headpiece uh, that I had on the, on the character from sketch B. And they liked the alien design um, of the piece. And so they liked the, the whole movie montage poster feel of this one. And uh, I was asked to take sketch C, uh, this one, to a, a finish. And so that involves gathering reference, um, potentially sculpting alien creatures, um, and shooting like reference of skies or gathering uh, images of nebulas and anything I can dig up off of uh, Google Images or, or whatever uh, website I might be able to, to check out. I'm also um, playing with like spaceship design and all that. So the, I'll walk you through. I'll walk you guys through. Is everybody, is anybody still there? Is anybody there? Okay, well, all right. So the, because I can't show anything that is copyright, copywritten, right? So find my process images. So after building up the sketch, this was the final drawing that I did for the piece before um, moving to doing my, my final painting. Uh, I, I tend to pour myself into just the drawing stage of it, uh, working out the finer details of any costume design, creature design elements, I, I tend not to just wing it or, or rely on guesswork or, you know, try to figure out, figure out the piece as I go, because that's more of a concept art thing where you're just kind of try to figure it out and see, you know, what kind of cool design you can make out of it. But for me, the, all of the concept stage, all of the color sketch, all of the uh, thought process, the guesswork in this job happened in the sketch stage. So after that, it just became a matter of uh, finessing this piece. Uh, in the story, I was told by the, the publisher that in this story, the alien was going to be a love interest for the human. So they didn't they wanted the alien to kind of feel a little bit more attractive and not so much like a an old lady uh like like what's depicted here like an old lady with a crown on her head um so i tried to go a little bit more um i don't know what do they what do they call those aliens from uh John Carter of Mars. I can't remember. Martians? Uh, that's it. Martians? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I tried to make her a little bit more humanoid, uh, more feminine, I guess, and then played around with um, like a spaceship design and really, you know, had some fun with that. Um, 
But after this part of it, after this stage of it, then it becomes a matter of just attacking it, just building up the painting um, and uh, bringing it to a final render. So this is the, the final painting based on that, uh, based on the sketch that I just showed you, final drawing. And I really love playing with multiple light sources in in my in my art. Um, Sci-fi art, depending on what era, depending on what decade you're you're looking at, uh, as far as publishing goes, will some of it some of that work is a little bit more psychedelic some of it is really chromatic um, colorful and we're we're in an we're in a time right now with uh some of the stuff that's done in adult sci-fi fantasy publishing that has more of a muted grayed down uh feel um, in 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 the handling of the of the art the handling of the finish has more of a looser uh, concept art painting kind of feel to it depending on the publisher uh, some a lot of the a lot of the work is also as a, a photo collage um photo bashed look to it uh, which is uh, not what i do so um i'm always happy to to work with publishers that let me draw and paint and design stuff and give them you know, as as fun and energetic and colorful an image as I can possibly deliver. Unless they say make it muted and gray and to fit the, the mood or the the feel of the other works that we publish in our with our, within our company. So what I'm gonna do today is since we're talking about rejected sketches uh, what I'm going to do today is take one of those sketches that I was kind of hoping the client would choose. Like this wasn't my first option to to paint. I I wanted I wanted the author to choose sketch A mainly because I was trying to fit this job in before a vacation, and I didn't want to be huddled over my laptop. Um, while on vacation trying to paint something like a whole big montage multi-light source scene with spaceships and aliens and all that extra work i was just trying to do the lazy thing and uh just do a, a single figure and, an, and a baby and a, a nebula background like something like this i could have knocked out in a week but <laughs> that's not how that's not how life works, and they always choose the sketch that you don't want them to. Seems like, um, but you know, at the end of the day, I I was fine with doing it, and I think that I got a a, a nice piece out of it. But um, Sean is saying that's beautiful. Me so much Mass Effect. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm unapologetic Mass Effect fan. I, I don't care what anybody anybody could say. It just looks like Mass Effect to me. You didn't even try, and I'll say thank you, <laughs> thank you so much. Mass Effect Two, awesome, thank you. Um, what reference did you use to make the alien? Uh, for the for the final piece, uh, for the final piece, the alien reference was actually. I'll show you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The face of the alien, oh, that's right, we can't show nudity, so it's a good thing one of my reference images has clothes. Uh, so that was my reference, my only reference for the alien's face. Um, so I've done alien aliens a, a few times in my life, and... Uh, this was the only part of the design where I was 
uh, making some stuff up, but I still had a, a solid ground to work on as far as where the light and shadow and the temperature uh, changes, transitions on her face were coming from. So it wasn't a hard thing to uh, move from that reference to the final design uh, of that. So, I mean, it's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of extra stuff in here as far as, uh, inspiration from turtles and frog eyes and, um, fish gills and stuff like that. Different, uh, textural patterns in the, in the skin. Um, I'm looking at seashells and shark teeth and a lot of a lot of things that give it a otherworldly but organic feeling. If that makes sense. Thanks, Sean. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Uh so and that's and that's my baby girl. I got a chance to paint her in a in a book cover and um she's actually going to appear in an illustration that's going to be pup that's probably going to come out i guess sometime next year um but i can't talk about who that client is but they gave me a chance to paint my kid which i was so grateful for um now the original oil painting is like sitting um on the floor in my studio actually i need to frame it but um but anyway, all right, so back to focus, Eric. No no tangents today. Uh, so I'm going to focus on sketch A. And I want to come up with a new narrative around this design. Okay? So I'm going to take this and copy it, and I'm going to bring this into our new template. So whenever I do <clears throat> whenever I do a book cover, I typically put all of my sketches on one sheet like this. And uh these these this cutout is scaled to the dimensions of a six by nine book cover jacket. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um I scale that down and then I make duplicates of it so that I can see everything on one sheet. And if I like the mountain range from one sketch and I want to include that in, you know, sketch B or whatever, or take this color scheme from one and move it to the other, everything is all on one, one file. And I can pull back, zoom out, zoom in and see uh, if my composition is working or if it's just trash and I need to start over and, question my life and like why I suck and all that stuff and you get into all of those moments of insecurity where you think oh my god why is this not working out why is this so hard to come up with an idea for this cover but then you let your brain relax you uh watch a movie and you come back to it and you say, oh, well, here's the solution. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to change this. I'm going to rotate this camera angle. I'm going to have fun with it. And you send your sketches off. And then they say, we love it. Go to final. Go to final art. All right. <clears throat> so uh, do we... She's going to be so surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she actually, I mean, she, she, yeah, my, 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 my daughter is, she's five now. So she's, she knows that she's in daddy's art and, uh, she sits in my studio and paints next to me. Sometimes I, well, if I'm doing an oil painting, she'll sit at my Cintiq and she'll, she'll paint, uh, and draw like digitally. And I've kind of been 
teaching her how to do that since she was one. So uh, since she could old enough to sit in the chair by herself or on my lap. So, anyway, no. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I've been talking for half an hour and haven't drawn a thing. That's a record. My God. All right. Um, so let's play with this. I like the idea of the guy standing there, but I want to change the, the, the baby to an alien. So and I took a couple, I had a couple of notes on where I wanted to go with the piece, but if we say, if we say we do the character first, our guy, right? And at this stage, I'm not trying to go for <clears throat> uh, anatomical correctness or proportions and all that stuff. I'm just thinking about um, the silhouette, the design of the, the piece. And um, it's got dreads and all that stuff going on. Um, I like to explore the piece at this stage. This is my guesswork. My what if you do this? What if you do that? Uh, stage of things. And I don't know how many comic book fans we have watching or if we have anybody that's read the works of Alan Moore. But I'm thinking about if the alien is in the same general position um, on this character that the baby was. Like, what if it's not in a a baby sack like that, but actually somehow strapped, maybe with tentacles or something? strapped onto him maybe with the tentacles looping around his head then it becomes a matter of designing whatever this would be whatever this creature kind of like a face hugger but a chest hugger so like the the face hugger reference uh is from the movie aliens or alien um so maybe there's something where it's it's holding on to him with some kind of slimy tentacle kind of thing um but i'm also thinking about superman comics and the work of a uh, comic book artist named Alan Moore, not comic book artist, but a comic book writer named Alan Moore. Um, he does, he wrote uh, Watchmen back in the 80s. He did a, a, a comic book, uh, an issue of Superman comics called, title of the, I think the title of the piece was For the Man That Has Everything. And it was a story about how this alien plant was used to like and it like sucked onto superman's chest and it like tapped into his brain and then showed superman an alternate life where he never left krypton and uh like he had family and kids and like had no idea that he you know, his family loved him and he never had any of the loss uh, that he experienced um, in his actual life. He wasn't the last of his kind, the last of his species. So, but that face, that, that, that chest thing that was on him was kind of like also slowly killing him off. And
I don't know if I want to give him dreads. Maybe a mohawk, maybe a curly hair, maybe like short with a fade or something. But this is to be, this would be the level of detail, the level of finish I would typically bring a sketch for a cover to. Like I'm not thinking about um, anything else. Maybe we've reduced this, maybe we change his age from a, an older guy to a kid or a teenager. So we go middle grade with it. But with with something like this, it's a self-initiated project, which is what I'm thinking about right now. So it's typically I would be given a a whole manuscript or at least a few chapters of a book to read through and be told uh, by a client. Well, we like the action of what you know whatever's going on in cha in chapter five or chapter twelve or something. Uh, but here are some ideas of what what you could do with the story or with the cover. Or they might just hand you the full book and say, "Well, here's the story. Um, read through it. Let us know what you think, and go from there." So we have this. Let me take a look at the costume from. I want to combine a couple of things. We'll take this. And. Sure. Oops. Want. Kind of think I want that costume design. Like maybe he's a cadet or something like that, and he's got this thing strapped to his chest. So whenever I'm doing a self-initiated idea like this, I'll sit and sometimes stare at my screen and then kind of play out what the story could be. Because the, the main difference between this and a like a, a just a basic character concept design is I have to now tell a story with this image, a narrative illustration. Um, like if it was just a character design, I could do a front, back, three quarter view uh, of the of the design and. Um, you know, and be done and then render it or color it, cell shade it, whatever, and then be done. But if somebody asks you, okay, set that character in an environment, have something going on in that environment and have the character reacting to what's going on in the environment, then you have an illustration. Yes, so so Sean, you're saying that you swear that was an episode in the old 2D animated Justice League. You're exactly right. That episode, there were no, a number of episodes of Justice League that were um, lifted directly from uh, ep issues of Superman comics, Justice League comics, Justice League of America, uh, comics from the 1960s, 70s through to current times. And it was really satisfying to watch those episodes and see how true to the original source material they were um but you'll you when it comes to dc uh the animated universe uh with bruce tim and and all those guys they are true fans of the source material and they have a love for dc comics and it shows with every animated film, every TV series from Batman animated series till now. So, but anyway, before I geek out and start 
talking about <laughs> my love for Bruce Tim and all that stuff. Um, yeah. So there, I think there was a there was a number of episodes dealing with Green Lantern that were just lifted directly from the comics, and I said, "Man, you guys are awesome." But uh, let me take this, and I want to play with the design of this creature. So, I want this thing to be... I don't want it to feel aggressive. That's the one thing I don't want. I don't want this to feel like krang from ninja turtles just like sitting on his gut or it's like a robot with krang uh for anybody that doesn't know who krang is it's the the brain aliens from teenage mutant ninja turtles um doing this sketch makes my brain think of all of the times this has been done before and uh it's the i guess it's the plight of an 80s kid that did nothing but sit in front of the TV so that every time I sit and draw something I go Simpsons did it <laughs> or or something like that um but like everything's been done everything's been done so um just kind of why I wish that John Carter of Mars had come out before Star Wars because of various reasons I won't get into. But let's say, let's say he's got, ah, uh, do I go with the ears? Do I leave the ears in or do I go with those little pad ear things? Uh, this is the fun design part of the job. Let's give him that cadet uniform kind of feel with the little symbol maybe his name etched in there i don't know if he'd have broad shoulders or more of a teenager look um but let's say this alien looks cute right i mean it looks slimy but cute. So how do we say cute? Um, let's get a new layer. How do we say cute? I typically go with the eyes first. Give it that traditional like alien eyes larger the eye the more cute it looks right we we all know that from baby yoda and stuff like oh it's so cute then like the fangs comes out and it like jumps out and reaches for your jugular and like bloods everywhere that's what i was kind of waiting for in mandalorian but it never happened whatever Give it a U W U face. I don't know what that is. I'm sorry. Is that like? Are you trying to type out an emoji? I don't. I don't know what that is. But like, cute alien. I don't know. Do we put the mouth up in here? Give it a Pokemon mouth. You can go, yay! <laughs> oh gosh. Um, do we you know, warp those eyes a bit? Whoops. I'm on the wrong layer. Lord. All right. So before I go any farther, here's a here's a tip. Here's a professional tip for you. Um, name your layers. <laughs> Sketch. A, um, and then I'll go alien.
sketch. Okay. That way, you don't find yourself drawing stuff on the wrong layer. You're saying, I'm surprised they haven't made a Sarlacc pit joke in The Mandalorian. Yeah, I mean, it's probably coming. It's it's a matter of time. <clears throat> um, from what I was reading, Boba Fett's supposed to be in season two. And I swear to you, if they start episode one with him just crawling out of the Sarlacc pit, I'm going to scream like a little woman. So... <laughs> um... So anyway, got to get my symmetry going there. Oh, actually, let me let me finish the eyeball off first. So I'm thinking, do we go giant pupils, giant human humanoid pupils, little bags under the eye? Do we go humanoid with it, or do we go more like goat? Do you have goat eyes? Goat eyes are funky, really funky looking things. I don't like that. That's because it's not instantly relatable. You want to say you want to have something in this creature that has no humanoid features, have one thing that our brains can connect to, and that is large adorable anime looking eyeballs I swear I feel like I'm drawing jigglypuff or something right now there you go I mean, who's going to want to kill that? Who's going to... He's so sweet, right? And you put a little highlight on his face, on his mouth. He doesn't have any bangs. He's like, no, we're not going to give them that. We're not going to do that with him. Some cute lips. Some goldfish lips. He's just hanging on for the ride. Yay! I found a friend. <sighs> um, all right. So, I don't know. Let's let's try this and then play with it. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just want to quickly Try to finish this off and then and almost like an emoji on an emoji. Some kind. Try to maybe try to keep it along the feel of what the alien was in the cover. Some spots. I don't know. Well, that's all of those surface detail things I could get into in the actual uh, painting of it. Like if I were to bring it. Full blast, but into all these folds and stuff. So this would be one sketch of a potential series and I could do a variety of different ones where I'm playing with 
the camera angle on this. Um, and see if that tentacle wraps there. Maybe we could have another one on his neck. And then the next question is, narratively, do we make the human a willing participant in this? Or do we have his eyes kind of like rolled back in his head and like in different directions? Like he's just a zombie at that point. I don't know. Hi, side effects. How are you doing? Right on. What's Gordon? Who's Gordon Freeman? Sean, Sean, who's Gordon Freeman? Is that a probably a reference to something I haven't seen? Which is uh, surprising. All right, so we'll Half Life reference. Ah, uh, is that a, if that's a first person shooter, I can't play it. Um, so I wouldn't know. First person shooters give me motion sickness. So there's a lot of stuff I I've never even touched. Can't even can't even play it in Best Buy. So let's play with a costume on this guy. Uniform. Oh, that's right. So one of my one of my daughter's favorite TV shows is a is a show called Tots on um, on Disney Channel and on Disney Junior. Um, and I was thinking. What if this guy is a delivery man? What if we play with that, right? So it's not a he's not the he's not the protector like he is in the in the original sketch. He's a kid. He gets paid, you know, a couple hundred credits a week to deliver aliens. So we play with the sleeves and and this one just happened to hitch a ride and break out of his little case. Maybe he still has the gauntlets. I don't know what these would be for, but feels kind of... Any sci-fi characters kind of feel naked if they don't have unnecessary gauntlets on their forearms. They have buttons or something like that going on. I don't know. Um... <laughs> Man, this is crazy. Um, so from here, we can do a character illustration. We can treat this like just like a character portrait illustration. Zoom this in. I don't want to get too nuts thinking about like what his pants and all that stuff look like because I really want the focus of the piece to be on the alien, right? Um, and that's probably not going to be the the final design. Actually, I hate that. Let me let me see if I can. I don't hate it, hate it, but I don't like it. But before I go that far, I want to figure out the rest of this guy's face. Um, like, is it a symbiotic relationship? Like, I because at this point, the eyes and the facial expression on this guy narratively are going to inform uh, the the mood, the tone of this piece. Like, should he look scared? That like throws off the whole. That like there'd be a huge juxtaposition juxtaposition there because we have this alien that looks like it's having a grand old time 
strapped onto this guy. And then if we give the human a, a scared look on his face, then it's, it's, it, it creates this weird vibe where now you really want to know like what's going on. Um, if we give him like dead eyes, like nothing there, um, or if he's just staring blankly, then it's a question of is the uh, alien controlling this guy, like kind of like invasion of the body snatchers kind of feel. Um, so then that's a completely separate mood. Then if we give him a smile or a smirk or something like that, then it's then it's a true symbiotic relationship where he knows what's going on. He's along for the ride. He said, yeah, sure, let's go get some ice cream or something like that. Um, and that's three completely different moods uh, that this piece could have just based on the facial expressions of the two characters. So I think from here, I probably want to play with the environment a bit. Um, like, do we... Do we show larger versions of this character? Show is he like surrounded by a whole room? All of these things like coming out of the corners with tentacles flowing. Like going along with the whole Tots delivery service, returning this alien home to its people like do we go like this and then maybe have a I do this with my students I we, we sit there and I think about like where do we take this how can we adjust this what if what if, what do we do how do we change this what do we, how can we add a, an extra element of story to a piece what if we do this what if we do that um so that's one angle where we could have a maybe a sharp more adult version of this tentacle maybe with some jagged spikes or something like that coming into the scene i mean this stuff could be like dripping and oozing right and I mean, at this point, I'm not trying to get fancy with the design and all that stuff. I'm just trying to go for the just a general silhouette of what is around this character. So we want to have this narrative where the creature is coming home. It's surrounded by all these other versions, and then we could have this mouth... Maybe it's more of a beak mouth and some fangs or some teeth or I don't know. What do the eyes look like? Are they just big and black? I don't know. We'll play with that later. But um, is the environment, is it a nebula or is it a cave or is it? That's all, all of that stuff that I'm trying to figure out now, as far as the narrative of the of the piece, would typically be given to me uh, by the client. They would say, "Well, the guy is returning to this." You know, he they would give me the the full breakdown and say, "You know, it's on this planet, and it's is what the color of the sky is." Or maybe they not probably tell me what the color of the sky is, but they would say, "Well, these characters." either emerge from the ground or they, they hide in a cave or something like that but um like you could totally have fun with it all right so this tentacle is wrapped here that tentacle is wrapped there wrap these tentacles around maybe he's got an, an extra thing on his wrapped here and then another one wrapped there And do we say, hmm, do we say that this thing is like really on here? 
So maybe he's got some blood dripping from his... So if we do the blood angle, dripping from his head, it's a narrative element for the story of the piece, but then it goes with my original thought of this guy is not a willing participant in this. Maybe I should probably change the expression on his face to, I don't know. Let's change the expression on his face to more of a So now we've got this kid here. And we don't want him to look, we don't want him to be like overly dramatic with his mouth, like a gasp and freaking out, but more. Something like that. So that that answers that question. I think I was probably always going in that direction anyway. Ears Just don't match up. Then do we put another little bit of blood trickling down his uniform like it's punctured something? But not enough to actually, if this is a whole neck piece like fabric, then we go that look like something like this. Ah, I don't like that either. Just go back to the ears. Doesn't need to be overly sci-fi for the sake of sci-fi in it be a dude with a shirt there's already a multi-tentacle alien strapped to him don't have to get fancy with his wardrobe So again, if there's anybody watching this and they're like, oh man, he needs reference. Like, why does this look so bad? Uh, <laughs> like, this is just my sketch stage and this is the typical uh, level of work, level of effort I might pour into a, a illustration concept uh, that I would present to a client. So I would go ahead from here and like color this and so that they have an, a general idea of what the composition is going to look like. Um, like if this was, if I meant for this to be uh, for the cover of a, like a, say a middle grade book or something like that, um, I might scale this down a little bit so that I'm leaving room for text. Um, but then, then again, depending on the publisher, 
they might be cool with putting text right a, right across the image you know, right there um title of the book author's name up in here or down in here um so you could go full scale with it um sometimes when you're doing an illustration uh job the publisher might say to you okay well this is going to be for a trilogy or this is going to be for this new series and the, they send you a template where it shows you like the author's name is going to be here and all of this space here is going to be for the title of the book and you have this much space to work in and go so uh, it's it's really a, a give and take a push and pull uh, between the artist and the graphic designer, the, the the layout team, for a particular project, where you might say, "Well, hey, I have this idea, but I think I would want to take up more of the space in the um, in the piece. I want to go full full scale with it. I mean, is there? Can you? Can we work out a way to overlap that text?" in a way that um, shows both of our characters and um, without, you know, being too uh, without really interfering too much with the narrative of the piece. So, uh, so let's let me play with this let me do one more version of that really quickly because so I'm just trying to work out the idea in my head now. Um, so if we took that, this idea, and we said to ourselves, okay, um, sketch two. What if we change the camera angle of of this composition, right? So what if instead of it being an eye level shot with him surrounded by these creatures, we play with it being something more, uh, something more low angle, high angle. We can play with that and see. And I do stuff like this. I'll come up with one sketch and then say, well, okay, what if you rotate? the camera around this like what's that going to look like um and i don't know i might i might start off and just do i mean this might not work out but it might i don't know but is it do we do something where we're looking down at the character i'm like i'm not feeling the alien and the tentacles and then have stuff looming over him. And that's that's sometimes when I'm doing something, I'll work out like quick ideas like this just to see if the silhouette works for the piece. Um, but then that changes that changes the vibe of it. So this could be a completely different mood. So we're going with fear and joy here. And this could be protective. Like he could be looking up. Oh. I mean, this is really bad drawing, but I mean, it's thumbnail sketch. Kind of idea. What if he's holding on to this guy and the alien is looking up? Still got the tentacles wrapped around him, still has something wrapped around his head and all that. And maybe they're both looking up and reacting to something. I don't know. Uh, Surely, 
be a little bit more dramatic with the pose. So if these are the aliens, like some evil uh, things, like claw, nasty, grippy, hands, and all that stuff, um, looming into the scene, these are would basically be dark shapes, dark masses that frame the action in the illustration. So like these aliens would be swirling around and creating these dark shapes, but also whipping in and pointing directly at the focal point of the piece, which I want to have dead center or off center right there. Um, this particular composition allows us to play with uh, this kind of composition where Maybe the author's name would go here. The title of the book might go somewhere in here. Um, but you know, it's it's also something to play with. Played with. You're saying low angle would be cool. Sean saying low angle. Let's see. So if we go low angle with it, <clears throat> low angle uh, changes the the attention and the focus of the piece away from the human figure and focuses it more on the alien. So uh, in this comp in this format, you see a lot of low angle shots in. Uh, splash art done for like riot games so a lot of those splash illustrations that you see people get excited about and go oh that's some awesome concept art and like part of it was and then they took all that concept art and they shook it in a hat and then they came up with a whole illustration that shows you the background shows you the character interacting with the background something going on in the scene um, and then they, the, the splash artist, the illustrator at Riot is having to figure out, okay, well, what is going to give us the most dynamic composition uh, for this particular character in League of Legends? And more often than not, they go with the low angle shot because it's the, it gives you a hero pose. Uh, it's the hero angle. You almost never see... Uh, if Superman arrives on on the scene, you're, you're typically not seeing him like standing there at a high angle with his hips, hands on his hips or something like that. Like you're not typically seeing that <clears throat> in, in, in the comic book, if it's for like a certain panel, but then the next panel guaranteed is going to be him standing there looking down. at somebody like hovering in the air you know cape flapping in the wind and then the crooks are going to be like oh i picked today to rob that bank i thought you were in australia you know like i can fly to australia and back in like two seconds you idiot but like that's that right um so let's play with this and we say Play with the opacity of that brush. And in this one, I want to have our character be a willing participant. I want him to be kind of kind of reacting or in a pose that kind of says, oh, crap, where am I? So in this one, we can still go with the whole delivery shirt kind of feel. Um, probably making his shoulders like a little wide. But. Give him shorts. I don't know. Do do sci-fi characters wear shorts? 
And then maybe have, oh, probably definitely scale him down. Scale that. Stay away. Say, where do we put the alien? See, for this one, I think I'd probably go with the alien being uh, strapped to his back. It's got like a whole book bag thing going. And the alien it in there. Looking up. Mouth open. I, mean, I I'm I know it's going more a little more kid friendly than uh than anything. And have it tentacles whipping around. By looking up, I mean this gives you a little bit more of a a dramatic narrative. Both kind of be freaking out. That. What does that book bag look like from behind? Is there a book bag? Or is are these the tentacles? Is it just wrapped around him like a book bag? The tentacle piece come out. So now it's not threatening. It's more God, did I just draw Nemo? Try to get him away from that fish. Uh, let's embrace it. Screw it. Gills. There we go. Alien's got gills in his face. Done. That. Uh, this. I don't know. However that looks. Tentacles are whipping around. Our kid. Could have a could have a delivery hat on or something. What if we make the alien look like it's scared and this guy would... He's ready for action. I don't want both of them scared. The hero character, let's say the hero character is our kid. Hero character should feel strong, powerful. Like you want the audience, the reader, kid that might be reading this book or see this book on shelves to identify with the character, right? To 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 not be like, oh, they're both a bunch of cowards and they're surrounded by aliens. I don't I don't want that. I want, I want them to feel I want him to feel at least. He's something. Maybe we portions of that will so his arm is there. We'll be here. His arm. The And we'd like clench his fist here, right? Mm. 
something like that. Still way off and still terrible. Terrible drawing, but not meant to be awesome. Just enough to to show the art director where you're going with the piece and then from here you go get reference for everything and instead of trying to make it up as you go like for me I would probably then have to go find a kid or get reference for a, of a kid and expose everything it's so simple yet so effective yeah like you see like these are two totally different illustrations now like we have sketch one sketch two sketch three would have been sketch three would have been this low angle shot sean but from a high angle so like if i were to do the the high angle shot it would be the exact same thing but kind of like fists out kind of like ready for action and then still have the alien like wrapped around him and I almost like the high angle a little bit more because now the threat is looming down on him right we have this scene where it's like oh my god are they gonna make it out of here alive um whereas this one as that hero shot where you're looking up at the character but it still works because we can still have that threat looming looming down like looking straight at them right kind of have that coming out and then have larger tentacles swirling in right? gigantic stuff Maybe there's another tentacle sweeping into the foreground, sweeping around the foreground of the composition. And like maybe, maybe this tentacle, maybe this tentacle is part of the alien's body. Maybe there's like an eye or something like that. some it's like fangs or something it's almost starting to look like a something you'd see in a Tim Burton film Beetlejuice character you know just play with that and then Maybe there's additional like teeth or hook things in there, oh, horns. I don't know. You really have some, but that's the that's the that's the challenge of doing something that's going to be aimed at potentially at thirteen year olds. It can't be too scary, right? It can't be. It, it can't be something where. The kid goes, oh, mom, this looks so cool. Buy me that. And then the mom looks at the cover and goes, nope. <laughs> so I, I would probably, if I showed this to a client, they'd be like, yeah, probably just take the eyes and the teeth out of the tentacles and maybe just add the suction cups instead. I mean, you could probably keep the slime. Uh... I mean, and that may kind of make sense now with the alien, this alien looking up at uh, this creature. Now there's a whole narrative going on here. So like we could totally have a, a, a some kind of sci-fi looking delivery man costume, whatever that might look like. In there 
So I think in the last, I guess, half hour, I think I'll color one of these. I don't know if anybody has a preference. I'll just splash some color on one of these things. Uh, I'm glad my parents were like, yep, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Sean, absolutely. I mean, these kids need a little trauma in their life. I saw Alien when I was... I don't know. Teenager. Came out all right. Get to sit here drawing slimy tentacles. So, I don't know. I think... For the sake of time, I'm going to color sketch one or A. So I would have A, B, because it's the, like, the most refined out of these. So, like, if I were going to show this to a client, um, I would refine all three of these to a certain level, okay, a finish. And then I would. Um, color all three of these with a different palette different lighting scheme for each one so that it's not just the same scene the same color palette with just a different camera angle um so with sketch a the environment the background environment could just be something uh completely different um but anyway let me show you i'll show you another example uh I, I think it's been a couple couple years so i i can be sure i can show so this is something i did find it first one second ah okay a b c so I want to show you, these are three sketch options that I gave a client. Uh, this is for Call of Duty, um, for Activision. And uh, that project is, I think it was for Call of Duty, whatever the last Call of Duty was, four, five, I can't remember because the first person shooter and I can't play it. So, um, But anyway, I gave the client three different options for what the sketch could look like, right? Sketch A, sketch B, and sketch C. So with each of these, I'm playing with the time of day a little bit, playing with the camera angle, playing with the amount of stuff in the, in the composition and in the narrative of the piece. Um, the client ultimately chose Sketch A, uh, Activision chose Sketch A, and I went about uh, pouring myself into doing this scene where these two uh, characters are in free fall. It, it, the whole composition is upside down, so these characters are in free fall falling into a junkyard with gun turrets shooting behind them with bullets bouncing off of the robot's body and the guy in the inner that's intertwined with the robot like punching the robot in the jaw Yeah, so yeah, that's uh it Black Ops 4. Yeah, maybe. I think it I think that's probably what it was Black Ops. Um but the final piece uh So okay, so I'll show you what I'm talking about. So the final drawing uh for that Call of Duty cover was this, right? So it's like a crazy amount of detail so i go i work out my composition my colors the design of the whole piece in the sketch stage after the client approves that sketch i bring i bring it to a final detailed underdrawing 
because I'm not I'm not one of those uh, illustrators. You know, like you might see somebody on YouTube do a tutorial and they're still guessing and figuring out the composition halfway through the final painting, flipping the thing around, reversing it, rotating stuff and, you know, trying to figure out what the what this illustration should be instead of structurally like it's kind of like you want to build a house and i feel like some people just just start throwing furniture onto the lawn before they've built the structure and the foundation for it um and like i'm not that person like i'm not going to jump into just doing a digital painting without having a solid understanding of where i'm going with that piece so there's that and then the final cover, final cover for that piece is this. So, like, I had a blast doing this, but like that just shows you like the, just the level of thought and care and detail that needs to go into a professional illustration job. Um, and I mean, this was the first thing I did for, for Activision and I was super pumped to, to show off for them and <laughs> be like, yeah, I can paint your characters. Uh, so, um, but yeah, so that's, that, that's what I was doing with them. And you know, I, the only thing that changed in this process was that the design of the robot changed like halfway through doing this illustration. So it went from having uh, like a triple, I think it was like, you know, it was supposed to have like three gun turrets or uh, like a, mach a Gatling gun to a single gun. Um, but it was, it was an interesting process where they said, oh, wait, hold on a second. You're, we actually gave you the reference from Black Ops 3 or 2. The, the Reaper design needs to be updated to be this version. I thought, oh, all right, well, then that's just adding tank treads, uh, patterns to the chest armor and all of that extra stuff, but it was not, wasn't wasn't a really big deal because the composition, the color scheme, all that stuff was already set. Um, anyway, so I'm gonna go back to my book cover sketch and build this up. So say first things first, I'm going to take the exact same palette from my sketch B because uh, it's just easier that way faster so I'm gonna just take the last half hour of this show and then just color this thing you're saying uh, Sean saying uh, oh man this is amazing thanks I love that the muzzle flash becomes a source of light yeah so that was uh I geek out over lighting in a in a piece and like so for this one there are only really two light sources hitting them um because technically if we were to be looking at this properly whoops oh that's not it if we were to be looking at this thing properly the entire composition is actually like this they are falling into a junkyard all right and um i thought well if i do it like this then that's kind of weird and then there doesn't leave room for text and that's kind of uh so i i like i just like to play with the the composition a little bit so yeah the muzzle flash illuminates the foreground so and i like playing with that warm cool relationship uh, kind of like every Michael Bay film. Blue and orange, blue and orange, blue and orange, blue and orange. Uh, so, um, 
but in this case, blue, green, uh, red, orange, uh, playing with complementary color scheme, split complementary color scheme. Uh, in this uh, yellow, orange, uh, blue, uh, blue, violet, red, green, uh, and red, orange, blue, green. So really having fun with color. So, and I like to typically like to stay within that comfort zone of a complementary color scheme when I'm coloring anything, uh, really. So let's dive into this. I'll say color. And... will select that color. Let's fill it. Go. Oh, that's right. I don't have any fancy music. Uh, Sean's gonna go make some sand some sandwiches, some breakfast. All right, right on. So I don't have any fancy music for you. Uh, actually, I do. I've got Spotify, and I can play some streaming beats instead of the soundtrack to Tron Legacy, like I typically do every single day. Um. Well, I, if anybody's listening to this, what, what, what kind of music do you listen to while you, while you paint, while you work? Um, smooth jazz, R&B, rap, movie soundtracks, what are you listening to? Shout out. Oh uh, yeah, Tron Legacy is my... My jam um, and for some reason I can't get my Spotify to work that's weird all right anyway uh, you know it would it be illegal to hum the theme music to Tron Legacy ah, I don't even know that's with it So that's my base tone. Everything else that I build up around that base tone is just going to be extra stuff. Um, So in this one, I want the light, I'm thinking that I want the light to be framing them. I want the light to be coming from in, from the interior of this piece. Um, but also I want the light to be coming from uh, two light sources. I want, a, I want a main light and I want a, a fill light. So my main light source is going to be more subtle. And uh, we'll play with that. Cause like I can take let's say this this the lighting in here is let's say it's an under lighting, right? Um, maybe it's inside some kind of cavern or something like that. And, uh, all of these characters are just underlit by some kind of, uh, bioluminescent 
flowers or something like that. I don't know. Do we go Avatar with it? Why not? Okay. It's, it's my piece. I'll do what I want. Um, so then we say pop that in there. Get in with the edges. I mean, right now, I'm just thinking about uh, the different glows and the different subtle, subtle um, light that we can build up into this piece. Video game soundtracks like God of War. Yeah, man. Um, I was saying that Kink 130. Yeah, uh, God of War soundtrack. Um, I remember going to San Diego Comic Con a couple years ago and being at an after party for Sideshow Collectibles. If, and if you guys are familiar with Sideshow Collectibles, and um, being on this rooftop sitting there talking to one of the composers from God of War and losing my mind because I, I, I had my, my iPhone or my iPod on me at the time and I just kind of like totally forgot where I was and geeked out and said, do you know how much of your music I have on this thing? And I shook my, I shook my phone in his face. <laughs> Can you, do you believe how much of your music I have on my but I was probably uh, a little a little sauced at the time. <laughs> it was a it was a good night. It was a good night. Oh, okay. right. So there's that. That kind of establishes the the feel. The mood for the piece, right? Um, we can push some of that. This glow, this neon feel to it. Um, and then for this, I'm thinking that we keep his skin tone, keep this part of it muted. Because I want the focus in this composition to really be on, I forgot to draw the sleeve, the other sleeve on that guy's arm. I want the focus on this to be the alien. So how do we do that? We have under lighting coming from the background, which illuminates and sets the, the, the overall mood, the tone for this entire thing. Um, I'm playing with a, a, a blue-green uh, color, which gives, gives off a, of like a feeling of um, like an eerie, magical, or maybe more ethereal vibe to it. It's not a happy color in this particular context, right? So um, the next thing would probably be to throw a little splash of color, of light, right across the face of the alien. If we said, do we keep it like, I wonder if we do something like, oh, there you go. That's different. That's different. Almost like a door is opening, right? Now, how far do we go with that? How do we push that? Choose. No, 
I don't like that. It's one way to go with it, but then that puts just as much emphasis on the guy's face, the kid's face, as it does the alien. So, what if we did it this? Same. Mute that a little bit. You still want to go with that that it's a light source. So the <clears throat> so the color and the the hue of the well, the hue of this the color of this alien changes as it moves away from that light source, right? It's all warm there, but then we can push this and say that bleeding out from there. Then we take this color, punch that up, drop that in here. And this would be the typical amount of work I would put in before sending it off to a client. Because as a freelancer, you might deal with companies, you might deal with people that have no idea what they're looking at. And if you just give them some scribble some chicken scratch drawing and say, yeah, well, you know, there's going to be an alien here and there's going to be some lights and stuff here and you'll see, it'll look cool. Look cool. It'll trust me. It'll look awesome. Some companies might go with you if you have a proven track record of being dope. Um, but if you're just starting out, you need to prove that you are the right person for the job and the only way to do that is to show them exactly what, or not exactly, but show them a fair approximation of what they're going to get, what the final art is going to be. Um, again, no guesswork. Uh, I'm not one of those people that <clears throat> builds up my colors or my values in stages, like doing the... Uh, I try to try to paint as much of it on one layer as possible. Like for this, I'm playing around with this light layer here because I'm thinking I might want to change or push the saturation of that yellow, of that warm, and I don't want it to affect the rest of the of the piece. I think I can delete that right now, so I'll, I want to push that color a little bit more make that a a happier warmer yellow hint and then we take some of that same color here if anybody has any questions uh yeah, so like yeah, the cute the like the aliens gotta feel cute. That's the that's the whole that's the whole uh juxtaposition of it. Like it needed to feel like this cute baby alien is coming back to this den of monsters, right? 
and uh the delivery guy's like oh my goodness wait let me get this right All right so from here i'll we'll probably take some of these greens from there yes I treat it like I'm glazing color in here. And you play with some violets. It's got some polka dots. Something like that, I guess. And then we give them nice, pretty blue eyes, aqua blue. I don't know, something like that. But that's uh, and we play with the highlight on that. A little bit. Redness. Maybe it's got red pupils. No, no. No. White pupils. What software are you using? Do you use an iPad or a Wacom? Um, I am currently working in Photoshop and I am on my Cintiq 24HD. So, yeah. And I think, and then add in some little specular stuff highlights and whatnot I think I would call this a day I mean I would come in to this a little bit more and add in additional stuff but I think for right now that gives me that wet look it's enough to go on so that would be my like sketch one color sketch for sci-fi book cover where a kid is i don't know playing with an alien baby um so i think i think that's my time for today uh i want to thank everybody for for coming even though i'm still working out the kinks and trying to get my my computer set up Trust me, you're not missing anything by not seeing my face. I'm just wearing a t-shirt and a hoodie and my uh, studio is just full of junk, So, which is totally awesome, but I don't think anybody needs to see that right now. But um, probably by next week, I'll have my camera all set up and ready to go. And uh, I, I, I mean, I shaved and everything, and now my camera doesn't, <laughs> wasn't working for this day, for this uh today so anyway uh thank you all for joining me and uh you all have a, a good day thanks sean all right take care bye-bye